long time viewers of this channel will know we like to make lots of crazy things this was an electric go-kart conversion so I started with a standard Kettler go-kart kept the frame and the steering and I think the seat and then added this electric drive and we're still driving it today uh, this is the drill press conversion that's been going on for probably just over two years it was a quick project but it's turned into something pretty large and comprehensive and then this was the start of it all building the CNC machine uh, this is my own design, it's a DIY CNC machine, there's a video on this on my channel if you're interested. Now the one thing they all have in common is you end up machining these aluminium parts, some of them are pretty thick, you end up with lots of chips, and the problem when you generate lots of chips like this, especially when you can't evacuate them, can't get them out of there, is they can bind up and they can start jamming to the cutter. Yes, you can use a uh, hand spray, and I do use a lot of WD-40 in a hand spray, you can see it going in now, and I use the vacuum cleaner, but occasionally it just gets the better of me. And uh, this happens. Yeah, it clogs up. I think the depth of cut was probably a little ambitious, and this is some very gummy stuff, but still, you know, I could do with something a bit better. I could do with a compressor. So, I did what most people do these days you have a look around on forums, on the internet, have a look on YouTube, all the reviews, and eventually settled on this model. So this is a Hyundai 50 litre silent air compressor. You've got the twin compressors up there. Uh, look, just the job. So, let's unbox it and see how we get on with it. Here it is. Well, it certainly came well packed. Um, it had a, a wooden insert in the lid. Look at the thickness of this cardboard at the side. You can't see it, but it's got bubble wrap down there. It's got the protective foams for the motor and for the valve assembly. I've just got these out. These were buried down there. So that's obviously the wheels, intake, instructions, and whatever. So, top marks for packing. All right, let's get this stuff out of here, and then I'll see you at the workbench. Okay, so it looks like we've got an air filter. Two of those, because there's two motors. Instructions, have a look at those in a minute. Uh, some fittings, wheel bolts, I guess. These are the pads at the front. Uh, I think those pipes are part of the air filter. And then, obviously, the wheels. marked up there PP so polypropylene yeah I'm not sure they'd survive a big impact but most of the time it will be stationary under the workbench I'm not really gonna wheel it around it's a bit too big for that okay seem all right Other bits and pieces. So that's for the filters, feet. I guess they're for the wheels. Okay. So that is what you get. Even better if that was in frame, wouldn't it? So you might notice this down here. This is Hyundai Support.co.uk, and that's because I ended up buying it off. They've got a Hyundai Center in the UK, and that's because I had a look around at lots of different air compressor suppliers, all the usual places, high end, you know, you, everything, including I had a look on Amazon, and everything, everything was the same price, three hundred and forty nine ninety nine, including buying it from a retailer, a distributor in the UK. And nice thing about this is they've got all the spare parts, you know, any problems, you send it back. Not saying you couldn't have done that with Amazon, but I felt a little happier with that, uh, buying direct, and yeah, exactly the same price. Now, I did find one company that was considerably cheaper, and I had a look on the website, and I thought, how are they doing it for this? I just didn't get a good vibe. I won't put the name up here, because for all I know, maybe it was genuine. So I thought, for peace of mind, they're all the same price. Uh, let's buy this... Uh, from Hyundai, so that's what I did. And then flicking through the manual, I've got the 27550, it's the 50 litre version. And we've got an 
here. Probably got all the usual danger, do, do not, etc. Troubleshooting. I think I noticed, yeah, how to put the filter on. Now, I read a few people having problems um, working out how to put the wheels on, and you can see it's not, I think basically the comments were it wasn't clear the order. So I'll have a look when we get to the machine. And if I find something that I think that works for me, I'll put a photo in so that you can see how I think it should be done at least. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at that in a bit. What else we've got in here? Okay. There you go, draining the tank because you, you will get water vapor in there, so you need to make sure otherwise you'll get corrosion. And in terms of specification, this is the model I've got. So it's one and a half kilowatts or two horsepower. Air displacement is 300 litres per minute or 11 CFM. Now that would be impressive if that was true. That's actual displacement of the piston. That's not actually free air delivery. The free air delivery is somewhat less than that. Um, I think it was 110 uh, litres per minute, 150, somewhere around that, like that. Or uh, I think it was about five or six CFM. So still good, but uh, not this value here. This is just the displacement. Uh, in terms of pressure, 7 bar, 100 psi, 50 litre tank. Now, I did look around at the 24 litre ones, but everyone was saying bigger is better. And this is about as big as I could comfortably fit in this workshop. I hopefully won't trip over it. I think I've just about got enough space. Uh, I did check those dimensions there. I think I can put it under one of the cupboards. And then, yeah, it's pretty heavy. So you need two people to lift it, really, if you're lifting it clean off the ground. Although, obviously, it does have the wheels. So I think that's all the critical information. And just a bit of warranty oh there they are gem power that's where i got it from so let's get the unit out of the box and then we can start putting the wheels and bits and pieces on so as you can see it's very well wrapped lots of bubble wrap at the side it's all reinforced okay, i think that cardboard is going to be fun to get into At least, uh, hopefully, it's arrived in good order. Right, let's get this out of here. Uh, I think it's on a styrofoam packer. So, let me clear all that away. I'll bring you back. Well, I think that was pretty well packed. Well, you've got a wooden plate at the bottom onto these little wooden bearers. Nice. Okay, I can see why people were commenting on how you're supposed to put these wheels on. So, uh, first of all, uh, that doesn't stick out very far and that sticks out quite a long way. So, I think that's the inside. So, I'm going to put it that way round. Uh, as you can see in the drawing there, completely different wheels, there's a much larger stick out on that. Um, the other thing you can see in there, you've got a nut, a lock washer and a washer, um, which, so there's the nut, so a lock washer there, or split washer, and then at least one washer there. Now the thing is you get two, and they don't go over this bit, they only go onto there, which kind of means uh, no, that, yeah, I think those are on last, so they'll go on there to secure it, but then you've got this spare one, which I guess could go the other side there, but then you've also got this spacer, which goes all the way on, and you've got this very large washer, which also can go all the way on, so I'm going to put that on the outside. I'm going to have this spigot part on the inside. I'm going to do it like that. On the other side, I'm going to put the space there. And then I think, for no real good reason, I'm going to put the washer there. Put that into there. And then these three bits. So the nut, lock washer and washer will then go on the inside. That's how I'm going to do it anyway. As you can see in the picture, it's not exactly super clear.
It's not gonna work, is it? Needs a spacer through the middle, not onto the wheel. Right, change of plan. I've got the bolt, the wheel, spacer. I'm gonna put the big washer on next. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Oh, it needs to go against. Right, new plan. <laughs> you need to be able to tighten this, but the wheel to be able to move freely. So we've got the bolt, the wheel, the spacer. Then I've put this little washer on here, which doesn't go over the edge of that. And the big one. And then the wheel. It's free to move about. Seems like a better idea. But it still needs that. I just think this is not this is not right. You know, I'm half tempted to turn this down on the lathe. It just needs to be just under that edge. So that this can clamp up, but the wheel doesn't move about. Right, this is the order I'm gonna do it in. So bolt goes through first, through the wheel. Spigot this side, then the spacer, then this little washer, which does not go onto that larger diameter, so it sits against that shoulder. Then the big washer, and that then gives you, it can turn, but it can also move a little bit, and quite a lot actually. Spins freely. A little bit of, little bit of axial movement, and it's nice and tight. Right, we'll do the other side. Get the feet on, then we'll bring you back. So these are the air filters. Now I've read some reviews that says these do restrict the flow somewhat, or they do bring the noise down. Uh, people have swapped these out for some other units and got a lot more performance so we'll see how we get on now i want to put this downward if i can but luckily this cap he says should let's get that in should just untwist there we go and then inside we've got the filter itself which needs periodically cleaning when it gets really bad changing out Hopefully we can orient that, that outlet, or the inlet rather, facing roughly down, something like that. Okay. Okay, so this is what we got then. So this is their 50 litre model, and it's super silent, or supposed to be quiet anyway, and it's oil free, which just means there's a particular type of piston they got in here. Uh, so obviously we've got our two compressors on top, I think they were a yeah, total 1.5 kilowatts, so 0.75 kilowatts each. Looks like we've got our pressure gauges on there, on off, we've got two outlets, so these are Euro style fittings. Uh, I guess that's probably over pressure. We've got a little drain down there, or a little uh, condensate trap, and then what looks like a little pressure switch that trips and starts the machine up when the pressure gets too low. So down here you've got an inspection plug. You're supposed to take that out about every 12 months and then have a look inside and just make sure it's not getting too rusty in here. And then to help prevent that, we've got a drain plug. Yes. As the sticker says, you're supposed to drain the moisture every day from this little valve under here. It's got this little knurled thumb screw. Let's turn that, let the pressure and the water out and then I guess you could leave it like that until next time and tighten it back up again. Might get a nice little stop cock on there or something like that, a little tap. But anyway, that's what you get. And then for the pressure lines themselves, you get these nice little fittings and these nice, really nice braided hoses. Gives you a bit of uh, bit of confidence. Same on that side. So they've got these two identical units. And they're supposed to be very quiet. And then they look like they're rubber isolated, which will help with the noise transmitted into this. Should be a nice radiating surface otherwise. 
and then there's our two gauges. So first impressions are very good, it looks really nice. I can't really see any corners they've cut, it looks like some good quality stuff. Hopefully it will last. Now the original plan was to get it into this cupboard here. Now I did measure it on the top and down the sides and I got the specs for this unit. Uh, but I've just had a look at it now and I think it's probably not going to fit. Let me show you what I mean. So I think for now at least, uh, we'll just take the door off and then I'll think about my options. Now this is an Ikea cabinet and there are some little cutouts at the back there which hopefully I can get the power cable through and then there's a socket up here on the workbench. So that'll run it and then at the front here I've got access to my two Euro fittings so I can put airlines in either of those and then I've got my pressure set here my on off control just behind. So although this is supposed to be pretty quiet I was also planning to put some absorption down the side here probably down both sides maybe at the back uh, probably not on the top just in case it falls down and lands on the motor while I wasn't paying attention and then it might overheat so two at the sides the base I'll probably leave clear because you'll be draining it and you'll get water down there so it's probably best to leave that as it is. Unfortunately the cable's not long enough to go up the back and into the socket so I've just come around the front for now I'll make an extension or maybe have a, an additional power supply that goes into the back of the unit or something like that. But anyway, for now, uh, we'll switch on and then see, see what it sounds like. Okay, and here we go. About 2.20. So in ter terms of noise level, that's absolutely fine. I live in a neighbourhood here. I don't think you'll hear that with the workshop door shut. You'd easily have a conversation over the top of that. So yeah, no, no problem at all. Uh, without changing anything on the sound settings, uh, what I'll do, I'll just fire up my lathe, which I'll consider also to be pretty quiet, and maybe we'll try and do a bit of a comparison. So this is me talking over the top of the lathe, um, I'm just behind the microphone, it's a, a directional microphone but I'm probably about 10-15 centimetres away, 1000 rpm on that, similar distance we were away from the compressor. Yeah, really pleased. Just thinking what else we've got for comparison, we've got my cordless drill, I'm sure you've all got a cordless drill, you've probably even got a Dewalt one. So that is on speed 2, let's keep the distance about the same. Now all we need is something to plug into it. So I went on Amazon and found this little three piece set. So you get the air gun, the airline and an air compressor. Uh, it's about 15 pounds. So I wasn't expecting too much, but the review seemed okay. And it definitely came with the Euro fittings, which is what I needed for that compressor. So let's open it up and have a look and then we'll uh, see how we get on with it. Okay, so we've got our tire inflator. Air gun. A little bit of air hose. Now, normally you have to pay quite a lot for this to get some good stuff. Um, and the cheap stuff can be a bit, doesn't really flex properly, breaks easily. So, you know, a whole lot 
everything here. 15 pounds. Let's see how we get on. At least it might get me going and then I can see where I need to trade up something better. So I'll open this up. Mm, feels a bit plasticky, but okay, that's reasonably flexible. All right, well, let's go see how we get on. Okay, now I've left this sitting here for about half an hour. I just went in to get something to eat, and it looks like the pressure has kept the same as it was before. I can't hear any leaks, so that's a good sign. So let's uh, plug this in. So that works. Well, this is my daughter's bike, so I've deliberately let some of the air out of this tyre here. And we'll just swap that over. Put the put the tyre inflator on. All right. Well, this is supposed to be max 50 psi, which is three and a half bar. We'll do it to about three. Oh, that's nice. Man, that saves a lot of effort. All right. Okay, let's summarize this unit then. So I'm a DIY hobbyist, so, uh, and I'm working out of a workshop that's just a little bit bigger than a one car garage. So the size of this unit was quite important to me. I need to be able to fit all the other machinery in and be able to walk around it. So this is about 650 long, so it just sticks out this cabinet. I'll probably do something to the cabinet to um, keep the worst of the dust off, but I've still got to let the air flow because these do get quite hot. So what we got here then, so this is about 350 pounds. So I think that's pretty good value for a 50 litre tank, silent, um, all the fittings are nice quality. I have seen some horror stories on some of the, the cheaper units that can get fitted some of these, some of these bits and pieces. Um, these all look really nice, look low, robust. I think we're going to get a lot of life out of this. Um, in terms of usage, so two and a bit minutes, two, two minutes twenty I think to fill up. Um, and then it's pretty quiet while it's doing that. In terms of using it, so we've got a little spray gun here. You probably saw, if you've been following my drill press video, you probably saw me see, uh, use the CNC machine. And I was machining some parts out and then I'll just blast it with this occasionally just to keep the chips clear. It's absolutely perfect for that. And then every couple of minutes, when you've lost enough pressure, just pumps it back up again. You barely hear it over the top of the CNC machine. So absolutely perfect, you know, for neighborhoods. Um, in terms of going a bit more than that, um, pumping up my daughter's tire, yeah, no problem at all. I think from my experience of that, it would probably pump up car tires as well, no problem. Uh, when you're starting to get into the heavy air draw, I did buy this, um, uh, this belt sander, uh, but the fitting it came with, I think, oh, there we are. Um, is not a Euro style fitting, so I need to buy some fittings before. I was hoping to try this out uh, in the video, but um, maybe we'll show that in a follow up. Um, these are really quite hungry for air, so I was keen to see how we got on with that. But you know, I, for me, I'm only going to just be it's probably going to be when I'm on the lathe, when I'm turning something, I just want to polish it or get that last hundredth of a millimeter out, something like that. You know, limited run times because stuff that uses a lot of air, this is where this sort of size may struggle a little bit, is my suspicion anyway. So would I recommend this unit? I definitely think it should be on your list. You should compare this to anything else you can get in this kind of price bracket, this kind of performance. I think for the average hobbyist, this is a pretty good machine. Um, obviously you can go bigger, you can go more expensive, but this to me felt like a bit of a sweet spot and so far I've been very impressed with it.
what else can we do with it? What about a power draw bar? Yeah, we could make a power draw bar, but not today. What about a CNC plasma machine? Yeah, we could use it for a plasma, CNC plasma even. Yes, we could do that. But what we're gonna do is this. Mm -hmm.